Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here. And in today's On Shape Sheet Metal tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a challenge found here on the Too Tall Toby website in the Practice Models app. So here on the website, we're gonna click here to get started with some free practice models. And here we can see we've got a repository of over 100 2D to 3D CAD challenges for any 3D CAD user using any 3D CAD system. And the challenge is to take a 2D drawing and turn it into a 3D model and then calculate the correct mass. Now we've got about 20 challenges in here that are free for anyone. And then if you really like the app, you can sign up for our premium members account where you're gonna get access to the entire library. But today we're gonna take a look at one of these free challenges and it's one that I just added earlier today. It's all the way down here at the bottom, 24-12-04. Let's click here to practice. And here we can see that the completion ratio tells us that we could be the first person to complete this practice model. Let's get it done quick so nobody beats us. So we can see here that this model is a tier three complexity model, not super complicated, but not super easy either. And that the skills tested are sheet metal and symmetry. And so if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of this page, we can click here to begin. And then when we're ready to go, we can click here to reveal drawing and I think we're ready to go. If you're ready to go, be sure to hit that like button on this video. And here we go. Reveal drawing. And so now we see that the clock is running and the question is, what is the mass of this part? And we're gonna answer that question and put it right here in this box. But before we get started, I think it's always good to come up with a game plan. Anytime you're going from 2D to 3D, it's good to come up with a game plan. And one of the first things you're gonna ask during the creation of that game plan is where should the origin be in the 3D model? And so one of the first things you can look for is does the model have symmetry? And here we see we've got this center line symmetric indicator. So the model does have symmetry along this line and that means the origin should probably be somewhere along that line. And then the next thing you can look for is, is there a spot where there's a lot of dimensions, a lot of information coming together? And I think that if we look at the front view here, we could identify this spot. If we look at this uh, side view, we could identify this spot. Because remember, the, the model is symmetric, so we don't have to model the whole thing. We could just model half of it. So I think that's where the origin is going to be located on the 3D model. So now the next question is, since this is a sheet metal model, what should the very first sketch look like? And when it comes to sheet metal, I always advise my students to look for two or more lines that you could sketch in that first sketch and then extrude as a thin feature or as a sheet metal feature. And so I think that if we could create a sketch of these three lines, maybe we'll take 130 divided by two, we'll take 105 divided, or not divided by anything, and we'll take 42, we'll take those three lines and then we'll extrude them out to a depth. And I think the depth is gonna be this depth here, 45. See, fortunately, this model has the same width for these upper flanges as it does for this kind of connecting flange here, 45 millimeters. So that's really going to set us up to create a nice, simple model. And so once we create that extrusion, once we kind of take care of that initial extrusion out to here, then the next thing we can do is we can create this sketch here for this little tab area. And the dimensions for that sketch are going to be shown down here in this front view. And once we have that side panel created, we're pretty much done with this model. There's just a, a few final features. We have to create these holes here at 10 millimeters and we have to create these fillets. And then we can just mirror the whole thing right across that center line, calculate the mass and we are good to go. So I know that that took a couple of minutes to come up with that game plan. But like I said, I think it's really helpful, really important to come up with a game plan before you get started. But now let's get into this modeling process. I'm gonna take this drawing and just move it over to my second screen. Here we are in on shape and let's do this. So we're gonna choose create. We're gonna choose to create a new document. I'm gonna call this 24-12-04 space SM pivot bracket. And I am creating this in the public space. So if you ever wanna look over my work, you can access that just by searching the public space in Onshape. And then the first thing that I like to do is just double check my workspace units. So fly out this menu here, workspace units. Make sure that we're working in millimeters. Make sure that we're working in grams. That's the correct units for this challenge, but some challenges are in inches. So it's good to know how to change that. This little hamburger menu, workspace units. So now sticking to the plan, let's begin a new sketch here on the right plane. Right plane, S key, new sketch. Then I'm gonna press N to get normal two. Then I'm gonna press S and launch the line command. Single click the origin, move over, single click again, let go of my mouse and type in 130 over two, enter. 
move my mouse straight up, single click, let go of my mouse, 105, enter, move my mouse over this way, single click, let go of my mouse, 42, enter. And that gives us our first sketch. If you're following along with, that's what your first sketch should look like. And if you've got that, you can hit the green check mark. And then you can go up here and on shape to your sheet metal model icon, sheet metal model. And we're gonna choose to create a sheet metal model by extruding. And we're gonna extrude this line, this line, and this line. Now, as we go through this, this box here, we can start out by choosing the depth of this extrusion. That's gonna be this depth in this direction. And that depth is gonna be 45 millimeters, enter. And then here, I like to use the tab key to advance through this box, and then the shift tab key to back up through this box. So tab to advance, shift tab to back up. So for thickness here, we're gonna input the sheet metal thickness, which is gonna be four millimeters default wall thickness tab, tab, and then the bend radius here is gonna be six millimeters for the default bend radius. Whoops, six millimeters for the default bend radius. And then what we can do is we can ro roll the view a little bit here, and what we wanna look for is which direction is the sheet metal material uh, relative to the original sketch. And so if you click on this black arrow here, opposite direction, you can push the material to the outside or click it again, push it to the inside. For this model, the material is gonna be to the inside. But every time you create a sheet metal model, it's very important to understand where the dimensions are on the print and how that relates to your 3D model. So this is what that, that uh, dialogue should look like for the sheet metal model. And if that looks correct for you, you can hit the green check mark and we're ready to move on to the next feature. So the next feature is gonna be that shape that's kind of in the front of this model. It's like a flat line that comes over and then down, and then there's a rounded part. There's some bend relief here at this end, and there's a hole here. That's gonna be our next sketch. So we're gonna create that sketch here on this face. So we pick this face, S key, begin a new sketch, N key to get normal to. And now we're ready to get in there and start sketching that geometry. So we're gonna press the S key. We're gonna begin with a line command here. And we're gonna single click here on this existing edge. Single click, kind of close to the bottom. Single click, move your mouse up. Single click again, move your mouse away. Come back and then come away from that point again. So like hold your mouse over that point and then come away again. And that's how you can transition into a tangent arc without leaving the line command in sketch mode. So we're gonna single click here and then we're gonna let go of our mouse and we're gonna type in five for the radius. We're gonna move all the way down here, all the way down to the very bottom, single click, move our mouse over this way, single click, move our mouse away, come back, hold our mouse over the end point, don't click anything, come away from that. And then you can kind of single click here where you're at an angle, almost 180, but not not quite. So single click, let go of your mouse. That radius is going to be 25. Enter. You're going to move your mouse up in this direction so you can get tangent. You could also put your mouse over this point here. Actually, it's not activating. I was hoping I could pick up that point there as well. That's all right. Move your mouse up here so that you're coming up tangent to that original edge. Kind of come up close to the top. Single click, move your mouse over this way, single click, and then you can move your mouse straight down, single click, move your mouse away, put your mouse over that end point again, and then come away from that end point again, all the way around to 180 degrees, single click, and then you can let go of your mouse and you can type in five. And once you've got that, you can hit enter, and then you are done with that sketched entity or series of sketched entities, you can hit escape. And now this point down here, you can just drag this point up as long as you didn't pick up on that coincident point. If you did, you have to break that relationship. But you can just drag this point up here and then you can single click this point, single click this point, and you can press I, which is the, the shortcut for coincident. You can single click this arc, single click this line, T for tangent, single click this arc, single click this line, T for tangent, and you can single click this line up top here, this edge, single click this line, and I for coincident, or in this case, collinear. So now we're going to press the S key and jump into dimension. And the dimension is gonna come from this upper line down to this arc. That dimension is gonna be 17. From this lower line up to this arc, that dimension is gonna be 17. From this edge of the model over here to the center of this arc, to the center point, that dimension is gonna be 166. And from this line down here up to this line here that's going at an angle, and that dimension is gonna be 33, enter. And after you've got all that, you can hit escape and you can take a look at your sketch. Your sketch should look like this. I'll just move these dimensions so you can see it a little easier if you're following along with as a tutorial. 
Make sure you've got everything that you need for this sketch. And once you've got that, you can hit the green check mark to exit that sketch. And then you can fly out this menu of sheet metal tools, sheet metal tools. And there's a sheet metal tool in here called um, tab. And once we click on that sheet metal tool for tab, you can single click here and that will take that geometry and turn it into a sheet metal tab. Now, there's a question here, which is, should we create that circle as part of the sketch or should we create it as a separate feature? And this really comes down to best practices. A lot of times in best practices, you will opt to make that as its own secondary sketch and then you'll cut extrude that through just because it'll have its own feature name in the tree. It'll be a little easier to manage, but you could certainly go either way. For example, if I cancel this tab command, I cancel that tab command and then I go back to that sketch too and I double click to edit it, I could certainly just add in that hole right here. I could single click here, single click out here, let go of my mouse and I could type in 30 and add in that hole as part of that tab sketch. So you could go either way. Um, there's times when I opt for one or the other. It really just depends on how complex the model is and how likely that feature is to change or maybe even become suppressed. You know, if we make this, let's let's just take a look at kind of like the pros and cons here. If we get rid of this hole here in the tab, hit the green check mark, um, choose the sheet metal command for tab, choose this here, hit the green check mark, and then we pick this face, begin a sketch, get normal to S key circle, and we make a circle here at the center of that that arc, and we make that circle uh, twenty, or sorry, thirty millimeters in diameter. Thirty millimeters in diameter, and then we do S key extrude, and we do a remove. And I'll say this is going to go up to next, so it's like a cut extrude up to next, or a remove up to next. Now we've got a feature in the tree here, and we can turn this feature on and off using suppress. So if there's a version of this bracket where that hole is not present, and then there's a different version where that hole is present, well, we could control that in on shape. We can make different versions of the part and easily suppress and unsuppress that hole. So that might be a benefit of making it as its own separate feature. So, you know, you can go either way. And again, if you're a new user, maybe you're wondering that, should I include the holes in the original feature? You could, or you can make them their own separate feature. It really just depends on what you expect to happen with that part down the road. For speed modeling, you probably just want to put it all in that one single sketch. <laughs> all right, so now we're at the final couple of features here on this half of the model. And one of those features is these two holes up top. So I'm going to pick this face here. I'm going to S key, begin a sketch, get normal to. And then I'm going to locate those holes using a simple sketch line. So S key line. And then I'm going to pick on this edge somewhere other than the midpoint. Don't pick the midpoint, but like if I pick on this edge here, I could single click, move my mouse over, single click, let go of my mouse, 10, enter, move my mouse over, single click, let go of my mouse, 25, enter. And then I can hit escape S key circle, single click here, move my mouse, single click, let go of my mouse, 10, and then single click here, move my mouse, single click, escape, and then pick this arc, pick this arc, and press E for equal to set them both to be 10 millimeters. Now, you could also have added in those locations using dimensions, but by doing it with lines, it was a little bit easier. You get the auto dimension and they're automatically horizontal. That's a great way to start saving time when you're creating cuts and locating holes in on shape. So now for the final dimension, I'm gonna create a doubled dimension. So I'm gonna create a line here that starts here, moves over this way, and I'm gonna press Q to make that a construction line. And that way, when I press the S key and I go into the dimension command, I can dimension from that line to the center point. And then I can say that I want that dimension to be doubled by crossing over that construction line before I drop the dimension. So cross over, 77, enter. And now we can do S key extrude. And we're gonna extrude this to a depth of up to next. Up to next is usually good for a hole in a sheet metal part. You don't want it to go through the whole thing. It's not going through the bottom, only through that face. So I hit the green check mark and then I'm gonna finish off with a quick fillet. So tab, 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 nine, enter. And then I'll just come out here and I'll pick this edge and this edge. And there we go. There's our fillet, hit the check mark. And now we're gonna mirror this whole thing. So I'm gonna click mirror. It's gonna be a part mirror as opposed to a, a feature mirror or a face mirror, part mirror. The entity is gonna be any, just click anywhere on the part. The mirror plane is gonna be this face here. And then I'm gonna say, I want this to be an add so it doesn't make a new separate part. I want it to be merged to the original part. And then you can just use this one here, merge with all. 
So merge to the original part, merge with all using add, hit the green check mark and, oh yeah, that thing's looking good. So we can press P to get rid of our planes. You could press shift P if you also wanted to hide the, the origin. You can give this thing what we call the final spin, just give it kind of a quick look over. Over here on the right, there's a tab for our sheet metal and it shows us the flat view of that part. So we can, we can actually look at this thing in the flat view and kind of compare that to the drawing. I think that looks pretty close. looks pretty close to what I'm seeing on the drawing. So I think we're in a good spot for this thing. So I'm going to close that tab. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to right mouse button on the, the part one. I'm going to say edit appearance. You don't have to do this if you're on a speed run, but it's kind of good to know that you can click here under mixer or you can click some of these different colors here. Mixer, I'm going to go up here to yellow and then just drag this all the way up to the corner to kind of match what the, what the customer has on their drawing. It's always good when you match the parts to the customer colors. The customers really like that. And then finally, I'm going to come down here to where it says part one, right mouse button and say assign material. And the material I'm going to assign is going to come from the TTT custom materials library. And that material is going to be plain carbon steel per the title block. And I'm going to hit the green check mark. This is a custom material because I modified the density to make sure that it matches the density on the title block. So I'm going to hit the green check mark and then way down here in the corner, kind of behind the clock, you've got this icon, which is the icon for mass properties. So if I click on that icon for mass properties, then here it says parts to measure. Just click anywhere on the part and the answer one, two, one, two grams. Let's go over here into our answer box and we're going to type in one, two, one, two, enter. And oh yeah, whenever you see that purple, that means you did it right. So let me move this over here onto the main screen. It says, congratulations, this answer is correct. And your total time was 15 minutes and seven seconds. So let's hit the submit button. Upon submission, you'll be awarded one point on the community scoreboard. All right, so I'm gonna click submit. And uh, oh yeah, we did it. And oh, look at this. It looks like uh, maybe somebody else snuck in and did this challenge while we were doing this tutorial. That's pretty cool. So there you go, guys. 15 minutes and seven seconds. Do you think you can beat that time? If you do, you can visit us at twotalltoby.com slash practice. You can take this one for free. We've got plenty of free challenges in there for everyone to try. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you learned anything or if you have any questions for me. And uh, I will look forward to seeing everyone in the next Too Tall Toby tutorial.